So a few days after the confrontation, we got a text message from McKelty saying that Robin and her kids weren't going to participate in this year's gift exchange. And it kind of hurt. All of you are just kind of jerks. I don't want to be around you, and I'm tired of it. And I don't want to call them, and I don't want to talk to them. And that's why I'm done with Robin. I don't care to talk to Robin anymore. That this is us going, you know what, Robin? Have him. Because we don't care anymore. We're all grown adults that don't need a father figure anymore. Hey friends, it's Katie from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It is Thursday, May 7th, 2024. I hope everyone's having a wonderful day. I'm not sure about you, but some of the clips and scenes from season 18 of Sister Wives are sort of haunting me in a way that I didn't really think they would since the news broke about Garrison Brown. And a scene that keeps playing over and over my head is when all of the kids were sitting with Janelle and Christine at Garrison's house talking about the text exchange and Garrison was really eloquently explaining the narcissistic experience they were having with Robin, where she was gaslighting them and making them feel like what happened to them didn't happen and that she was the one that it was happening to, making them question their own reality and even saying and going as far as saying, this is me saying, all right, Robin, you can have him because we don't need him anymore. And I just remember when he said that, I just did not feel like he meant that. I could tell that he was just putting, trying to put on a brave face for his siblings, trying to put on a brave face for himself, trying to fight back in any way that he knew how, and trying to feel like he would be okay without his father. But I don't think what he said was true. And even Christine said after that, that every child needs their father, that even she still to this day needs her father. And that no matter what is going on, this is going to be painful for the kids. And we are now learning that that estrangement with Cody was a very big part of Garrison's struggles and his hurts that he was dealing with. And his family was in the process of imploding and it was hurting him. And if you watched Sister Wives, you know that Garrison was the oldest son that lived in Flagstaff. So he was the oldest of all of the boys, the kind of big brother for that entire group down in Flagstaff. And I think he took that role very seriously and he wanted to very much be there for all of his siblings. And I think that's a lot, he had a lot of weight on him. He was also trying to navigate being a member of the National Guard and navigate work, navigate having a mortgage, navigate having to pay his bills while being on a show and not getting paid and his dad's picking fights with his siblings on a television show. And that is a lot of burden to put on a very young person. And clearly he was struggling and now he is not here today. And we've now learned that Sister Wives will continue filming and this will be part of their storyline. And as I continue to discuss what has been coming out, I just want to reveal this because I honestly missed the story. It has been very hard to keep up and I'm doing my best to deliver to you content. But I feel like this is something that needs to be shared and something that is relevant and I think is going to speak to how Robin Brown is likely to make the situation about herself. Plus, I have done some research into why Cody Brown may have needed a ride over to Garrison's house, and it has to do with the fact that he has unpaid speeding tickets in the state of Arizona, which have been unpaid for more than four years, and there is a registration hold on his account. Robin Brown also has a registration hold on her account, and both of them have holds, one for four years and one for three years, meaning it's at this point highly likely that both of them have suspended license, meaning that 
Cody isn't going to show up at a house that has a lot of police officers without a valid driver's license and show up in a car. And Garrison Brown's roommate, Addison, who was the one that saw him that night and was close friends with Garrison, uh, spoke with us weekly and broke their silence and broke their silence on Garrison. So the article about what happened and how Janelle was following the news about Garrison. This is a few days old, so again, I apologize. But at the time, a source was saying that Janelle was angry and numb and she hasn't processed it clearly. She's definitely not processed this at all. She doesn't even know which ends up, which makes sense. You've This is less than 24 hours after she finds out that her son has passed away and she has to grapple with that reality and doesn't probably understand what has happened. Uh, anger is not an uncommon response for grief and it would be unsurprising for her not to feel some level of anger, frustration, sadness, whatever. And she will not, as she is able to process this, she will likely get to a state of complete and utter devastation and grief and sadness. But this is what the source went on to say. She's very angry right now. She's not a crier or an emotional person. It takes a lot to get her to break. So I think right now she's going to like go, what the heck happened? How did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? This family is extremely broken and tortured and it's very painful for many of them. The source is making it seem like she's not sad. She's not upset. She's just angry and mad, which I don't buy, but maybe. And then this is why I feel like the source is Robin because they said the source claimed that Cody's fourth wife is the one who's actually really upset about it. She's really devastated. Robin is really devastated. She's actually the one who's really upset. Robin's the one that's upset, not Janelle. Janelle's angry. Do you see how if this is Robin doing this and one of Robin's friends doing this to the son, how gross this is? It's always a competition with these people. And Janelle is probably feeling frustrated. She's probably mad at herself. She's probably mad at Cody. She's probably angry that this happened. But that doesn't mean she's not devastated. And it doesn't mean she's not upset. It doesn't mean she's not crying. In fact, the police report, she doesn't sound angry. She doesn't sound very mad. She she sounds heartbroken, confused, distraught because she she felt like she should have done more. I mean, that's what she said to the police. I wish I would have done more. I should have gotten him help or I should have done something more for him. This was a woman that was so worried about him that she sent her son over there and to go find him that was calling his siblings to see if they had spoken to him. This isn't a woman that didn't care about her son. She loved her child and is truly devastated. Robin lost a brother this way. And her brother, her younger brother, died by himself a, a few years ago, Paul Sullivan Jr. And so I could see potentially her being triggered by Garrison also taking his own life. But I don't believe for a minute that Robin is the one that's really devastated because Robin had no relationship with Garrison. Robin treated Garrison terribly and Garrison hated Robin. And if Robin is devastated and really sad about this, she should be sad and devastated for how she treated him. And she should be living with the regret for the atrocious way she treated him and his brother and his sister and how she allowed her husband to treat these boys and how she played the victim the entire time. Robin Brown, in my opinion, doesn't get to have a say whatsoever about what happens to Garrison, about what happened to Garrison, about his services, about his funeral, about his legacy. He hated her and she doesn't get to make this about her. That's just me going on my soapbox. So Robin says she's the one that is really devastated. Earlier today, um, Us Weekly spoke to Garrison's roommate and his roommate Addison said in a statement to us weekly all I have to say is that he 
was a wonderful person with nothing but positivity to give to others. He helped me greatly when I needed a place to say he was a good friend and a good landlord. He is a good person and someone I look up to. Gar Addison was the roommate that was the closest with him, that spent a lot of time with him, that told him, that told the police that he would give Har Garrison rides at night to get food, that Garrison had been struggling with alcohol, struggling with um, his ex-girlfriend, been kind of down and depressed recently, but was hoping to get clean. He said that Garrison was, in, he believed intoxicated that day, but didn't seem in terrible spirits. Addison is saying he was a good person. He was a positive person and a good friend. Another one of his friends from Las Vegas that he hasn't seen in a while also spoke to Us Weekly and her name was Kenya Gutierrez. And she said, I did not expect it. He was always a person you wanted to see, and he'd always say hello to you. His presence was being gracious. He was always so happy. What happened was shocking. And that while they hadn't seen each other in a while, they still texted, and that everything had seemed normal in the weeks since leading up to this. She said that she hadn't seen him for a couple of years, but they communicated frequently via text, and they texted just a few months ago, and she said that there was nothing alarming about their conversation. She said he was a very happy, optimistic person, and he would always talk so much about the greatness about his family. They were very close. You know, something that he definitely seemed very fond of was his family. And so when a family falls apart, it can definitely cause a lot of pain. And he's losing his religion. He's deconstructing from a faith. His identity was in fundamentalism, and now he's out in the real world. He was in the National Guard, and I don't know if he was still in the vet. I don't know if he was still in the Guard or if he was now a veteran from the Guard. But if you leave the Guard, that can also be a loss of identity. It can, you know, there's also higher incidences for individuals that are veterans. There are anywhere from 16 to 22 veterans every day that end their lives. And it doesn't even have to be someone that was deployed. It could be someone that was just in the National Guard and did training. Some of the training can be traumatizing. So there's a lot that could be at play here. I do think that the rejection of a father and the deconstruction from a polygamous group is a lot for anyone. And young men that leave these groups deal with a lot of depression and a lot of them fall into substance abuse to cope and to n navigate the pain. Someone that I spoke to today that is from the AUB told me that when they left the AUB, they became an apostate. And when they grew up in the faith, they do not drink. And someone left a comment and said the AUB allows alcohol. That is not true at all. They, are, they do not allow alcohol. Alcohol is a sin in the Apostolic United Brethren. And she told me that once she left, they were never taught about moderation. They were never taught about the effects of alcohol on your body, if it can damage your body, if it can be addictive. They don't teach people any of that. They just tell you it's bad and to stay away from it. And so she said that she went hard, not realizing that it was bad for her and it can be cause an addiction, but that being able to numb out after leaving and having all of that trauma from leaving that culture and growing up that way, it was like medicine is how she described it. It's when you've grown up in, an, in a world that doesn't teach you moderation and doesn't teach you that it's okay to have one or two, but don't take it to ex extremes and not teaching you the dangers of how many and too many, what it can do. It's easy. And then if you're feeling sad and sh struggling, it's easy to go to a bottle to not have to feel. But then that can actually make your depression worse. It's, it's a spiral. It's sad. So you have Robin Brown apparently saying she's more devastated than Janelle, the mother, which is total crap. And then you have a friend calling him a very nice person, another friend calling him super optimistic, a, a really great light bright person. 
so it's clear that something had again changed and as Janelle had said the last few years Garrison has been more withdrawn and less happy and she was worried about his mental health now with regards to Cody and Gabe uh, one thing on the police report was that Cody Gabriel left the house after he had found Garrison after he's talking to police he leaves the house to go get his dad and someone in my comments earlier said, I have a theory that he went to go confront his father. I mean, that could be true. I don't know, but he may have been asked to go pick up his father, maybe by Janelle, maybe by someone. And the reason is, is that Cody got a speeding ticket in 2020 in the state of Arizona. It was like going, it was a high level speeding ticket. I think more than 15 miles an hour above the speed limit, which required like defensive driving school and all of that. And he did not pay the ticket. And so the ticket went on his record and he has an unpaid fee and he has a vehicle registration hold and it's been on there for four years. So it not only is a registration hold in that it prevents him from registering vehicles that he owns in the state of Arizona, but it also means that his license, his driver's license can be suspended for not having, for not paying driver or the driver, the speeding tickets. And all he would have to do would be to go pay the ticket. <laughs> That's all he would have to do. And it would go get lifted. He'd just have to go to the courthouse and make the payment, but he didn't make the payment and it remains on his record. And Robin has one too. This means both of them to this day are still driving around with suspended licenses. And I asked someone who works and has covered polygamy for decades if this is common. And they said, yes, that polygamists do not care. A lot of them don't even have driver's license. If they get a ticket, they don't pay it. It doesn't matter to them. But in this instance, do you think Cody's going to show up at a house that's filled with police officers and medical examiners? And they've got multiple units there. He's not, and, and they're asking for people's identifications when they're interviewing them. So do you think he's going to show up in a car driving and then give his driver's license, which by the way is suspended to police? He could, he would have ended up with a ticket. He could have ended up getting arrested for all we know. That's why he needed someone to take him there, pick him up. So he'll drive to Utah. He'll drive to all across the States. He'll go to Texas. He'll go to Oklahoma for a wedding on a suspended license. But when he needs to show up at his son's house after he's died, he needs a ride. And his son is that found him is the one that has to go get him. It's just so typical of Cody making someone else clean up his own messes. So that's what I have for this update. If you have comments, questions, or concerns, make sure to leave them below in the comments. Also, make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like content like this. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure to subscribe below by clicking on the subscribe button and make sure to share this video. Bye, guys.